Hello everyone. I have a new product here I want to talk about. It's an LCR meter test fixture board. It fits inside the uh, zero meter cable length test fixture. I'm not really sure what the official name of this is, just a test fixture. Uh, I'm using a BNK Precision 894. The 895 uses the same test fixture. I know there's other LCR meters out there that use the identical test fixture, just a different logo. It'll work the same way. Uh, the reason I made these is this makes life a lot easier for doing small surface mount components. These meters have the ability to measure small inductances, small capacitances, small resistances, uh, but they, they're difficult to use on the physically small parts. This test fixture is obviously meant for through hole components. Uh, the unit also comes with these leads, which are fantastic, but they're still pretty bulky and hard to use uh, for, for small components. Uh, there is a test fixture you can purchase for surface mount components. I believe it's about $500, and you have to drill down and put the component in there. It's, it's, they're difficult to use, and you have to take the, the chance on breaking the component. Uh, the components are very delicate. The, the metalization on the end of the capacitors can crack. Um, the, Small inductors are very delicate. They have the metalization only on the bottom side, uh, the, the reflow ones anyway, the, the reflow uh, wire bottoms. Uh, they have the metalization on the bottom side and you can't really pick up uh, the, on the side of them because you'll, you'll damage the coil. So it's, they're difficult, you don't wanna play with them too much. This gives you the ability to solder them down and you have them forever. You can, you can always go back to it. Uh, if you're doing, uh, you say you're, you're doing lots, uh, you're, you're spot checking lots over, or samples, uh, you can take out a batch of this, uh, this inductor, this capacitor, and you can solder 10 of them, and you, uh, uh, you have them forever. You can put the, a date, batch number, serial number, however you want to handle it, on the back of these things. You go in there, you take your measurement, uh, you write it down and you store it away and you have this now as a reference. If you're not doing lots and batches and things like that, it still makes life a lot easier just to use it in the purpose I originally stated, which is for surface mount components. Instead of using the test fixtures, this makes life much easier. Uh, I'm zoomed out right now. I'll zoom in. I'll stop the video and zoom back in here because it's a little hard to focus on this LCD screen here. Uh, but uh, I've gone through the, uh, the, the correction on this already. I have one board here that I use as an open, which I will give to you as marked open, and another board here that I have soldered shut, and uh, I'll mark it as a short. That, those come with it. Those you can you insert into your test fixture. You go through your correction, uh, shorts and opens correction. I've, gone through a, I've already gone through the sweep correction on this, which swept all of the known... Uh, or preset frequencies into here because uh, we're going to be using preset frequencies. There's there's no need to use a, a custom frequency, uh, and it's a it's kind of a long process. So I've already gone through it on this. So let me uh, stop the video and zoom in here, and we can resume. Okay, so this is the zoomed in view. Uh, I hope you can see this a little better. It is an LCD screen uh, here, and I can't seem to focus on it uh, precisely, but it uh, should, be, should be good enough for the purposes of this demonstration. I have already gone through the calibration. Uh, I've done a sweep uh, correction on this. It sweeps through all of the, the known preset frequencies uh, and does its correction using the zero meter, uh, zero meter cable length uh, test fixture here. Uh, we're going to be using preset frequencies, so there's no reason to uh, deviate from anything. So I've used my, my open, sorry about that, my open and my shorting, I've got a marked here. And I've got this set up, we're gonna take a measurement now. I'll grab my inductor, this is an 0402 inductor. Uh, it is a LQW15AN series. Let's see here, I'm going to Set this to LS series. Series inductance. Put this in here. 
And as you can see, I'll zoom in here a bit, 0.0276 microhenries, uh, which is a 27, 27.5, 27.6 uh, nanohenry adductor, which is what this is. This is a 27 nanohenry adductor. I believe it's a 2%. There is uh, tolerance involved with this as well. Uh, but as you can see, I, I think 27.6 is pretty impressive. The Q again, uh, that, that's, we're nowhere near the operating frequency of this inductor, so the Q is not going to really register uh, at this frequency. I'll go out to zoom here. Now we'll test our capacitor. This is an 0402 ceramic capacitor. Go to here. Measure the Q here. Put this in. And I got to change my frequency, sorry about that. Measure this at 120 kilohertz. 27.384. Sorry about that. I zoom in again. 27.384 picofarad. This is a 27 picofarad capacitor. Uh, I don't remember the tolerance. It's probably uh, a 2%, somewhere in there. Q is 800, 900. Uh, seems a little odd, but, but that is uh, that is accurate. The, the Q on these capacitors is rated in the hundreds of megahertz. Uh, they're tested in the hundreds of megahertz, and that's where they uh, rate their, their Q of 80, 90, 100, 120, whatever what is. So the Q at this frequency is going to be substantially higher. So anyway, that is, uh, that's how these things work. Uh, thank you for watching.